All right, so what I'm gonna do now is actually install the CPU onto the motherboard as well as the heatsink fan. And if we didn't uh, go over this before, this here is a ZIF to actually protect the pins in the uh, processor. And that actually comes out, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and start with first. Just pops out just like that. I'm gonna put that to the side here, and as you can see now, you can see all the pins in the process. And you definitely want to try to be careful, don't try to touch those, you don't want to bend them or anything. So, now I'm going to take this uh, CPU out of its packaging and show you how to exactly align this up. You shouldn't have to put any force on CPUs when you actually uh, put them into the motherboard. And they usually have some type of arrow to indicate exactly how to uh, put this into the motherboard. <clears throat> if we can get this focus on this arrow, arrow at the top. So, let's see, 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 see. So, if you can see this little arrow right there at the top showing that that is the corner that you want <clears throat> to look for on the motherboard. So going back here, let's see if you can see it here. Because I want to actually show you this. Because I know it is some beginners here just like me trying to figure this out. If you look at the pins on this uh, socket here, there is like one missing pin here in the corner. And that's where the arrow needs to be uh, when you actually put this CPU into the socket. So again, here on the top as well, it has that arrow. Again, if I can get this camera to focus on it. It's an arrow right here, basically. Alright, and you flip it over. That's the same spot the arrow was at a minute ago. Alright. So again, carefully placing it here with the arrow facing in the corner that we want it. Again, let me just zoom back so you can see that. Should just fall in place just like that and it shouldn't be moving at all. And again, you should not have to put any pressure on it. It should just fall directly in place. If it doesn't, just pick it up and rotate it into the right direction. So once it's in like that, I can actually close the, the lid here. And there will be some, some resistance. So don't be alarmed about that. And there we go. Our CPU is installed. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing most of this before I put it inside the case is because anything that I'm going to have to put any pressure on, I want to do it on a flat surface instead of inside the case. So next, what I'm going to do is install the actual fan here. And it's another important feature here you need to know about. It's the thermal compound here, which is usually included on new um, uh, CPUs that you buy new. And definitely want to make sure you have some type of thermal compound that's actually going to uh, help the bond with the CPU to allow the heat to transfer into the heat sink. And you don't. Another thing you don't want to power on the motherboard without the heat sink fan on because uh, the CPU does generate a lot of heat. And you're just basically going to kill your whole CPU and going to have to buy another one. So that's very important. Not to, again, do not turn the computer on without the heatsink fan on the CPU. And here, you can see we have some little legs here. And if you examine the motherboard again, you can see that we have some holes here. And that's actually where the legs from the uh, heatsink fan fall into. And all of this is usually in the manual as well, so again, don't be afraid that you have to just know all this uh, beforehand. And something else the manual will tell you to do is these legs can actually rotate. It's like a little locking mechanism. And it uh, actually told me to rotate it 90 degrees to the right. So this little, if you can see this, if the light can bounce off of it. This little line here is actually facing outward instead of inside towards the heatsink fan. And here's this little power cable that's going to hook directly into this port here. It actually has uh, some pins here associated directly for the, the fan. So I'm going to position it where this cord is actually closest to the pin that it's going to be falling into. So I'm just going to slide it right there. And just apply a little pressure on it. Again, try to be careful with this. And this is my first time doing this, so hopefully I get it right the first time.
And what I'm trying to make sure uh, what's going on here is that these uh, bottom pieces are flush with the motherboard. Let's see if I can actually show you that. As you can see, this one here is uh, fairly flush with the motherboard. This one here is lifted up a little bit. And as well as on the bottom, as you can see, the little pins are punctured through it. And this one here is what I'm trying to work on this last one here. All right, so this is the back of it. Let me see if I can, as you can see the four little pins here. So it is all the way through it. And it was a little hassle getting. Again, this is my first time doing it. So uh, for beginners, you might have to play around with it, but you definitely just don't want to put too much pressure on it, but you will have to apply some pressure to it. So don't be afraid. The motherboard is fairly strong, but Again, just don't get uh, wild and crazy with it. And again, this uh, cord here from the fan just plugs directly into this port. Just like so. If you can see that. Alright. So now we have the actual CPU installed as well as the heatsink fan. And now we can actually go ahead and install the one gigabyte of RAM since that's something else that we sometimes have to apply some, some pressure to to uh, get that installed. So again, everything that I need to apply pressure to, I want to go ahead and do it now before I put it inside of the um, computer case. Alright, so here's our RAM. And this is again one gigabyte. And I probably will be installing Windows 7, which does just require one gigabyte of RAM in order to install that operating system. And I probably will upgrade, depending on if I will keep this um, computer or not. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it once I build it, but we'll see. And again, try to be careful once you're opening this. You don't want to damage the, the RAM, of course. Let's get that out of here. I wish I had a little bit better lighting so you can actually see everything look clearer, but just work with me here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just install it in probably this first one here. And usually you can't really put RAM in incorrectly. It's usually just one way for the RAM to actually go in. Let me just try to zoom in on that. Uh, let's see. So you just try it one way, see how it goes, and there you go. Seems like it's going to go in. You will have to apply some pressure to it. But I'm just going to show you, if you did try to put it in the other way, that it just basically would not go in. As you can see, it has a little pin here, or a missing pin here. And that actually should line up with this port that you see here. So I'm just going to turn that back around. Go ahead and get that installed. As you see, these two flaps here actually fold upward and lock this RAM in place. So that's set. And next I can actually go ahead and put this into the computer case and start installing those, the rest of the components like the hard drive and the DVD-ROM drive and the, uh, the bezel components like the USB header and everything. 